If I turn it around this way, it'll be completely calm and just sit there. Isn't that amazing? So I can do anything I like down here, and it's completely, yeah, whatever, doesn't worry me, I'm just gonna sit here and bask. I'm gonna come around this way, and I'm gonna give you a kiss. Oh, you're backing up. All right. Wherever you find babies, there's big ones. And I think I've run fair smack dab into Mama Croc, hiding on the bottom. And then, she decides that I've got too close. She's on me. You can see her mouth is open. She's displaying her teeth. That means I'm on here. I just need a bit of a stick. I'll jam it in the back of my pants in case we get into a serious confrontation. And she's idling her way straight at me. If she pushes it too far, I should have enough time to give her the stick to chew on while I make a hasty retreat. Look at the way she plods along the bottom. This is great. She's decided that I'm not a threat and she's moving back into the reeds. Have a go at this. I've pushed it way over the limit. Pushed it to the mat. This girl is gravid. She, here she goes again. Whoop, she's hissing. That hiss is a display of her dislike of me being so close. She uses the silt in the water to her advantage. Now I can't see anything. Time to back off. Woo! She murks the crystal clear water up. You wouldn't want to bump into her. She'll have me. She'll chop down on me. Give me a nasty bite. Here she is. Here she comes. You can see that mouth open. That is an awesome display of don't come too close or this is what I'm going to bite you with. But she doesn't follow through. She doesn't strike. She doesn't slice at me. She's more inquisitive than anything. She pushes through the mangrove roots where I can't even go. I can take the risk of being this close because she can't swing around and get me in amongst the mangroves quicker than I can get out of the way. So I'm pretty well covered. At least that's what I'm banking on. And you can see how easy it would be for someone to get bitten in a situation like this where you've got a grumpy mama crocodile. However, she hasn't had one major swing at me. So that's uh, job done. I'm out of here. Good nesting season, sweetheart. I'd love to give you a kiss, but I'm not going to push it that far. Perfect attitude. Good self-defense, but no unnecessary aggression. woo -hoo! Further north, the city of Tampico has asked Steve to assess their crocodile problem as well. I can't believe this, not for... I'm stuck for words. Have a look at this. Check this out. Big, buffy male in the front here. He'd be well over eight feet. And then you've got all those sliders. And then another one at probably a full grown adult female at seven foot. Another stack of sliders, big male. Big male out the back. He's the biggest one here. He's just trying to cool down a little bit. He's obviously reached a really good temperature and needs to open up his mouth. And just legs tucked back. Oh, of course, it's two o'clock. Siesta time. Mexico. What an amazing density for such a built-up area. Have a go at this. Look at this. There's just a whole string of crocodiles in varying sizes. Have a look at that one there. It's a nice size one. Right here, right in front here. 20 crocs. Right there. Bang. Crocs and people are always crossing paths here, sometimes literally. This is a great walking track. Apparently it goes all the way around the lake. Uh, wait a minute. Laguna. Laguna and um, you can see the city, the metropolis, right there. Fligro, so crocodile nesting site, no trespass. I know this doesn't look too crash hot with all this colorful flotsam, floating debris, rubbish, pollution. But what is remarkable here is this is actually a crocodile slide, a trail going straight up here, over the walking trail, immediately to the other side to her nest which is right here 
That is too close. A raised walkway is Steve's suggestion, part of an overall management plan. That is a good population of crocs. I mean, you cannot get a more altered habitat than where they live. They are the masters of changing and evolving and adapting to their surroundings. The Tampico community really wants to save their crocs without stopping the development they need to survive. And they're showing Steve the surrounding habitat while he releases a baby that's wandered into town. Little baby. He wants to get out. Have a look at that little tacker. Hey? You're very cute. You're very cute. Can we go over here? Here in the wetlands, um, out, out from Tampico, the, um, there's some girls that are actually reproducing successfully, you know, hatching out little tiny babies like this. You better grow up to be very, very big. And the only way he's going to be able to grow up is if they get complete protection. Because right now people are hunting uh, small crocodiles and adults uh, for their meat and for their skins, for their commercial value, which is ugly. Anyway, good luck. Quick, quick. Where you go? If they want crocs in town, and they do, this wetland's gonna be vital. This um, fresh water snake is non-venomous, and he was over in the middle of town. Watch this, he'll just... You won't even see him leave. Just like an eel. It's a situation that's full-on sharing between people and wildlife. The community needs the resources of the ecosystem as much as the crocodiles. Mucho! Oh. Can I look your trap? Thanks, mate. Oh, look at this. Come on, little crab. Blue crabs. Blue crabs. Here we go, blue crab. You know, crustaceans are, are found worldwide and uh, the laguna that we're looking at had a lot of crabs, had a lot of these uh, blue crabs and little orange ones and they make great croc food. Not only inside here is there great nourishment and all of the nutrients that they need, but their shell is just like a giant great calcium tablet. Beautiful tucker. Muchos gracias. People here live and work right at the edge of the water. Even so, croc attacks are not a big problem. The big issue is how to protect the crocodile. Brain. Have a go at the size of this. So that's a big old um, carpa, freshly caught. Yeah, that big, 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 big scale. And you can see you get a good feed out of this bloke. Get a really good feed. You got teeth, mate? I'm not <laughs> pretty big fish and of course that's very attractive to a big adult Morlitz crocodile and so what happens of course is they come in chasing the fish excited by the vibration get into the monofilament and um, get tangled up trying to grab the fish out they drown or sometimes fishermen come along and uh, fix them up These are tourist vehicles that are um, actually taking people out on the laguna every day. And have a look at this. What are you doing, sweetheart? Have a go at her, would you? And the people are telling me that um, every day she does this on high tide. Because you can see at high tide there's no banks for her to come up and bask. So what she does is she uses this uh, man-made jetty to come up and bask. But she's still got enough sense of self-preservation to keep a safe distance between her and humans. Okay. And apparently, even if kids go towards her, they get uh, she gets scared and goes in. That makes her a pretty safe crocodile. Good attitude. And when the coast is clear, she's back on the jetty. Out on the Laguna, we're being guided by Alandro Ferrero, the director of Tampico's Department of Environment and local vet and croc expert, Manuel Carrera. In amongst the other wildlife, we've seen a lot of adult crocs, but very few little ones. Have a go at the size of this bloke. 